And so that system becomes a construct that's projected and then becomes manifest, and the world simply provides that um, that reflection. And that manifested construct is what I have called for many, many years the enemy construct. And look at this world. Look at the control system and the controllers and what do they always do? What do they say? And, um, it, you know, it doesn't matter how many times, uh, it happens. They can keep doing it successfully, except for now, which we can get into later. It's starting to break down because people are starting to wake up to their own responsibility. But prior to say 10, 20, 30 years ago, by and large for thousands and tens of thousands of years, society and geopolitical and economic models were always and social structures were always controlled by taking advantage of the enemy construct. You know, it's the Machiavellian principle, divide and conquer. And on whatever point, somebody outside of me, whether it's me individually or us as a society is responsible. So it's either the the Muslims, the Jews, the uh the the you know the savages versus the civilized peoples whatever uh there's always an enemy but that's just a collective protection and we enable ourselves to be controlled by that and so that's the enemy construct and so the only way out is in the only way to get out of this mess is to go in within ourselves not to not to retreat and you know, hide from it, but to face ourselves, to deal with ourselves and understand the power of taking responsibility. Because for every time I use a phrase to some effect of saying, they are doing it to me. Oh, those bankers, oh, those Rothschilds, oh, those politicians, they're doing it to me. That's a creation of disempowerment. I'm creating myself to be disempowered because I'm putting the power of creation outside of myself saying there's an enemy outside of me. So along that line, I also created another phrase or maxim that I've worked with, with myself and with other people for over 20 years, which is there are no enemies. There are only opportunities. What does that mean? Every time we find ourselves, we witness and observe ourselves going into the enemy construct, if we can stop, take control of ourselves, stand here and look at ourselves and take responsibility for that projection of our own internal separation, then it's an opportunity. What do I see in myself that is being reflected that, for example, is reflecting my disempowerment? You know, and when it gets down to it, what is the ultimate expression of our disempowerment? The lack of money. Look at the money system, which I've been looking at for decades. Money system is structured so that it has systematized, because we're talking about the world system, systematize our dis- self-disempowerment. Because we know we can create, we know we can create a world that's, that works for everybody, that cleans up the mess. But what is always standing in the way? We don't have the money. And so when we get into the conversation about the legal system and the the structure of things, what I talked about as far as using the system by understanding it and directing it, you will understand how this has all been systematized. You know, the whole issue of going to peace. Um, What's the flip side? The flip side is we live in a world of war and conflict. And that system of war and conflict is based on the Machiavellian principle of using the enemy construct dividing and conquering so that they can play one side against the other. And then they figured out um, that um, they could monetize it on both sides and they win both ways. And that's not just true about war in the physical sense. Yeah. You know, the Rothschilds have been uh, funding both sides of the war since before the American revolution and they profit on both sides and they always win. Uh, and they get to manipulate geopolitical chessboard relationships and move things towards the the end point that they have always directed it to. But at the same time, that um, that on a more subtle level, every single day we are engaging in war because commerce itself, the 
legal structure of the creation of that money that we're talking about is fundamentally structured as a field of battle. And it's a reflection of that internal battle that I've been talking about. And so every, literally, and I mean literally, every time we do anything in commerce, and that means uh, this phone call, every time I use this phone because it's constructed on a commercial contract that's creating commercial paper, you know, what we call money or currency, and which is really public debt. Uh, every time I use my phone, there's a commercial transaction that's an act of war. Every time I do, you know, get a traffic ticket, every time I go to court, every single time any of those things happen, it's a commercial event. And by the nature and construction of commerce uh, and the legal system and the monetary system, it's an act of war. So going to peace means that in order to simultaneously be free, both within ourselves and within this system, this world system, legal and monetary system, we have to stop being in that field of battle. And mo many people will say, yeah, but I got to eat. Yeah, but I got to do this or that. That's true. And there is a way to do it. That's the solutions that I talked about that I sought to figure out in my life's work and being a master puzzler to put it all together and see where the actual solution is. And just in summary statement, I will tell you there is a solution. We can go to peace. We can stand outside of that, um, that field of battle and still exist in the world. In fact, we will start existing more and more in the real world, the world that is just life, that is the same purity of life that I talked about that's in that we all had within us in, when we were very young. We still can return to that. We can come to peace and start creating the world as creation the way we want to. You know, that's quite interesting um, the way you just sort of said that about we, we came in peace, you know, as children. We only saw things as they, you know, were in our reality. And, you know, it's occurred to me that that is actually existing here on this planet. There are communities, there are tribes, you know, in the Amazon rainforest, those sort of areas that are actually living completely outside of this fictitious uh, reality that's been imposed upon all of the civilized worlds, because it's only the civilized worlds that are not yeah. living in reality. So it, it shows to us that it's, it's actually possible to do this, because it's really about, and this is what Sarah talks about a, a lot, that it's about agreement, that we've all agreed mm -hmm. to allow this. Um, I don't know if right, you sure. have a question to jump in on, on with this now, but otherwise, you know, we can just... Uh, well, on. yeah, I'd like to um, have the other two jump in as well, but let me just address those a couple of key yeah. points there. The most important one is that word civilized. Uh, before I go into that, let me also say that a big part of my work uh, from an early age, I like to read. I, I, I grew into a love of language. I study linguistics and, and language and so forth um, during high school and college and ever since. And looking, uh, I mean, um, uh, going into the realm of law, studying law, fundamentally and ultimately understanding language is paramount and not just in law the esoteric system understanding symbols and, and numbers letters you know all that esoteric stuff it all gets down to the construct of language and so language is very important and that's one of the things that we really emphasize in gemstone university is really uh opening up to really seeing how language is constructed and so that word civilization, what is it based on? A Latin word called the civitus, and the civitus meant the civil body. It's what we call the public now. And essentially the civitus was a containment field, and it, is, it was a quasi-free, quasi-citizen uh, construct. People were happy to be part of the civil body back then. That you know, for those who knew, which was the mass of the population, they were not going to be the elite. They were not going to be at those high levels. But they didn't want to be slaves. You know, so it, it's it's 
you know, in a lot of ways, it's the earlier configuration of what we have as the the upper crust and then the middle class and then the poor. So back then, there were no poor. They were just slaves. Uh, so the middle class was the civitas, the civil body, and that was something that most wanted to strive for. But what it was is you were lifted off the land. You were put into a civil containment field, um, which is now where what we have is the world system. And so when that process of civilizing the world, what did it really mean? Well, you know, the population was was entrained into a belief and, of course, got wholly behind it that they were civilized because they were of God, you know, and there comes God in the Bible and all that. And so it was their duty, it was their absolute mandate to bring those heathens or savages who were not of God uh, into that fold. And so they got wholly behind, you know, they, they didn't pay much attention to the fact that, you know, that included slaughtering many populations, hundreds of millions of people on the planet to civilize them. Well, we'll civilize them, we'll kill them in order to do that. Um, they all went for that program. Um, but it, what it really was, was lifting those remaining parts of the world population off the land, because who were the indigenous? They were stewards of the land. They were holding a resonance in their co-relationship uh, with the land, not to say that you know, all of those societies were perfect. Um, they were at war. They did all kinds of nasty things to others as well. But they had a relationship with the land, and so they had to be lifted off the land. So to be civilized is to be lifted off the land, put into a containment field, and controlled within the civil system, Roman civil law, civil procedure, and everything that our legal system is today. So that's a real key point. Yes. Yeah. And it does seem to be the only problems are in the in anywhere that's become civilized. And the most people's perception of civilization is, is uh, completely contrary to what you know, you've just said, because the, the those people that I mentioned that are living still at a natural world, they're living in the real reality. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's really cool that you've, you know, you've explained exactly what that, that civilized world comes from. Uh, so uh, unless, uh, if Sarah, have you got anything to um, jump in with this? Otherwise, we'll, we'll go on with the um, further. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, just a quick comment, because I, I definitely want Ken to go on and, and, and let us know more about what he's uh, speaking of. Just to give you a little background uh, about me, I learned about you, Ken, uh, from listening to The Real Matrix Hidden in Plain Sight, Babylonian Debt Magic System and How to Break Free, uh, that was an interview that you did with Jeff Berwick. And my background prior to opting out of the legal construct was what he did, which is a, uh, I was a professional trader on Wall Street uh, for several years. And <clears throat> that really caught my attention that um, when he brought you on the show, and, and now that particular show is one that I send to people who are just beginning to examine uh, the so-called matrix and you have so well drawn out the reality of the situation that that's, that's an excellent video to, uh, to let people know about how the like macro view of what's going on and where to go for more information. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. Now, yeah. Uh, so just a quick comment and I'll let you go. Um, going to court, getting a ticket, uh, just to let you know where I come from and how I proceed uh, on the plane, on the plane at the moment. You know, I continue, will most likely continue to do so. Um, to accept a ticket would be an act of war. To go to court would be an act of war from my perspective. And that, and the reason being is because a ticket is simply an offer to join club legal or club death. I, I like your characterization of it. It really is a, a death construct. It's a club death. Um, and so in order to accept 